Hello and welcome back. I'm Dr. Elena Filippo, a registered dietitian, giving you scientific facts and tips on nutrition, because we are also what we eat. Today, let's explore when we should eat. The term chrononutrition is something relatively new, but it was Hippocrates, the ancient Greek father of medicine, who first referred to the importance of meal regularity 400 years before the birth of Christ. Fast forward to now and we have research linking meal regularity to the development of metabolic problems and chrononutrition. So how does meal regularity affect health? Studies have shown that various metabolic processes that take place in our body, such as the regulation of blood glucose and insulin, how our body responds after eating, fat metabolism and storage, detoxification and others, follow a 24-hour internal clock or circadian rhythm. The name actually comes from the Latin for circa, which means approximately, and diem, which means day. Our hypothalamus in our brain is where our central clock is found. And we also have a number of peripheral clocks in almost all organs and cells. The interesting thing is that these clocks are affected by external factors such as light, age, genes, and of course, the time we eat. It is also true that appetite, digestion, and metabolism of food also follow a circadian rhythm. So if we eat at regular times, which don't change from one day to the next, the messages on our biological clock will also be received at regular times. In the opposite case, when there is irregularity in the time or in the amount consumed from one day to the next, our biological clock is disturbed, so this increases the chance of metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is a combination or a cluster of many risk factors for cardiovascular problems and diabetes, such as increased fat around the waist, called visceral fat, high blood pressure, low good cholesterol or HDL cholesterol, and high triglyceride concentration. An example of disturbed circadian rhythm happens in shift work, especially for people who work at night. The above effects are believed to be related to the internal desynchronization resulting from changes in the sleep-wake cycle. Of course, lack of sleep is considered an important factor, but some of these effects are also thought to be related to irregular meal intake. So how much do irregular meals affect the likelihood of metabolic syndrome? To investigate this scientific question in greater depth, Dr. Gerda Pod and colleagues studied the meals of the population of the 1946 birth cohort held by the University of London and the UK Medical Research Council. This study involved people born in the same week in 1946 and their meal intake was studied at age 53. It appeared that people who had more irregular energy intake in the morning were more likely to have metabolic syndrome than those who had more stable intake. That is, if one consumes 700 kilocalories for breakfast on one day, the next day they consume 200 kilocalories at that meal, and the third day they don't have breakfast, then they're more likely to have metabolic syndrome than another person who consumes a more stable breakfast. One might also ask, does it matter when we eat? And the answer comes through an old saying, eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, and dinner like a beggar. Many studies have shown that eating breakfast helps reduce total caloric intake during the day, lowers total and bad cholesterol, but also helps maintain body weight. It is good to know that every time we eat, our metabolism increases by about 10% of what we consume by the production of heat, something that is called post-meal thermogenesis. So if a meal contained about 400 kilocalories, about 40 of these kilocalories will be used to metabolize a meal. So it has been shown that we have a greater increase in a metabolic response after eating the same meal in the morning compared to exactly the same meal in the evening. While at night, digestion and gastric emptying are less effective. We all know that heavy meals at night affect the quality and duration of sleep. And when we don't sleep enough, our energy intake and likelihood of obesity also increase. 
a feeling of loss of control over the amount and or the quality of the food eaten at that meal, resulting in long-term weight gain. At the same time, if we have big gaps between meals, our metabolic rate falls in an effort to protect us from the supposed starvation that it thinks we're going through. After all, our ancestors who gave us their genes were the people who managed to survive under adverse conditions. So in conclusion, chrononutrition means that we should not only think about what we eat, but also when we eat it, how often we eat it, and keep a steady schedule from one day to the next. This is not always possible, of course, due to the social jet lag that creates a mismatch between our biological clock and the social circumstances. For example, if we are invited to dinner late at night. However, we can try to follow six very simple chrononutrition rules most of the time, as they will contribute to our health and quality of life, such as one, always eat breakfast, two, eat something, a meal or a snack every three to four hours, three, eat the biggest meal of the day at lunchtime and before 4 p.m., four, eat most of our energy before dinner, five, eat approximately the same energy at each meal from one day to the next, and six, eat a small dinner, the smallest meal of the day. You can also find the article on chrononutrition, including more research both in the link below and on my website. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. Leave me a comment below on what chrononutrition rules you follow. Bye for now and I'll see you in the next video.